In this section, the guys are going to talk about what happens when there is a possible pilot deviation. Now, you already know about CAE's commitment to the principles of the just culture concept. But the FAA is also a big proponent of the just culture way of doing things, shifting away wherever possible from enforcement to their compliance program. Now, to refresh, a just culture is one that has both an expectation of and an appreciation for self-disclosure of errors. A just culture allows for due consideration of honest mistakes, unintentional deviations or non-compliance that arise from factors such as flawed systems and procedures, lack of understanding, or diminished skills, especially in a complex environment like the national airspace system. But because even unintentional errors can have adverse serious impact on safety, it's the FAA's job to ensure that the underlying safety concern is fixed every time. And it uses its compliance program to identify safety issues and correct them as effectively, quickly, and efficiently as possible. Examples of compliance actions include on-the-spot corrections, counseling, and additional training, including remedial training. Generally, if you are qualified and both willing and able to cooperate, the FAA will resolve an issue with a simple compliance action. And they absolutely love it when pilots utilize their WINGS program. And 999 times out of 1,000, they are satisfied with the remedial training plans CAA puts together for its students and staff. Now, the FAA will continue to use enforcement, such as certificate suspensions and civil penalties, when needed for those who cannot or will not comply. Likewise, when evidence supports an intentional deviation, recklessness or criminal behavior, or other safety risks, those also would rule out compliance actions. So let's take a look at the discussion on this. On occasion, a student or instructor or a pilot will do something pretty incorrect. Can you kind of explain, you know, how, how do you decide to issue, issue the brasher statement or uh, kind of start that uh, pilot deviation process? If we feel that we've given an instruction, the pilot did not do what we instructed him to do, and we feel there's a potential deviation, then we will issue the brasher statement. The whole point of it is not to necessarily get anybody in trouble. It's just a review so we can review the tapes and, if anything, learn from the situation. Basically, what will happen is um, as soon as we feel it's a good spot in the flight, we'll go ahead and issue the brasher statement, which will sound something like this, the call sign due to a possible pilot deviation. Uh, call Falcon Tower at this number, and then when you get on the ground, wherever you're going, then you will call the tower. The tower is going to request some information from you, your pilot uh, certificate number, your address, this, that, and the other. And then after that, we'll start listening to the tapes and find out exactly what happened. Um, sometimes it's the pilot's fault. Sometimes it's the controller's fault. Sometimes it's uh, not even an issue. So right. it's just a, the whole point of it is a learning experience for all of us. That's the, basically the, the sum of it. That's Perfect. a good point, right? Because look, most of the time it's the pilots messing up, but that doesn't mean it's every time. As you said, Chris, sometimes it's the tower's fault. I've even had, I've even seen a few times where there actually wasn't any issue whatsoever. And that's why they say possible pilot deviation. It doesn't mean that there was, it means that we need to look at the situation a little more closely. One time, and it wasn't a local Falcon thing, but one time there was a crew that went up flying. And this is a true story. This was last summer, actually, right? I, Pat, I think it was last summer. There's a crew that went up flying and and they got hit with a possible pilot deviation were flying into a TFR, a firefighting TFR. And they came back and they said, look, I swear on my life, it was not there when we went. I promise you, they had done their job and gotten a weather briefing from flight service station using 1-800-WX-BRIEF.COM like we want all of you to do. And they had got the next gen weather briefing emailed to themselves. And they had showed proof with a timestamp. There was no TFR there. And guess what? When the FISDO was looking at that, they looked at that and they said, oh my God, you're right. So get a weather briefing. Uh, Chris, talking about uh, PDs again, you really like highlight, I like that you highlighted the point that we don't know if someone's at fault. We just want more information. We want to learn about what happened and we want to fix the problem. Yep. And that's really all it means. Yeah, absolutely. It's just another uh, avenue to uh, for us to all learn and to figure out exactly what's happening. And then if there is something, you know, if it's trending, that's a, a reoccurring thing, then we can look at maybe some procedural changes and stuff like that. You know, we have a really strong just culture here, right? 
And I want to make sure that kind of everybody also knows the FAA also has an incredibly strong just culture system. So there's no blame in our system. There's no blame in the FAA system, which is why if you do have a pilot deviation, I want you all to know it's okay. It's it's okay. And safety is going to help identify how we can best solve the situation. That's going to help me and Pat put together a, a proper remedial training plan to help you, you know, identify some maybe some knowledge gaps that you have. And the FAA, most nine out of ten times, you won't ever hear from them. You might get a letter in the mail at most.